Good day, managers. Max here from Evidence Based Football Manager. The full version of FM23 is finally out, and the time has now come for, for me to resume my football manager research. The very first thing that I wanted to test in FM23 uh, are the new tactical instructions that have been added to the game this year, the step up more and the drop off more instructions. You can find those two instructions right here uh, in the out of possession tactics page. Okay, so straight away there's an obvious question that's staring at us in the face. How are these two instructions any different from this one here where you can manually adjust the level of defensive line of your team? They're even called the same thing, you know? So this one's called uh, defensive line and this one's also called defensive line. What's even more confusing is the presence of the line of engagement. So in the previous versions of Football Major, this line of engagement was called either high, standard or low. But in this year's game, they changed the terminology to high press, mid block or low block. So what if you set the line of engagement as low block, but at the same time you set the defensive line as much higher? Is that still considered a low block tactic if you do that? And what if you turn on the drop off more instruction at the same time? Aren't these like three instructions that sort of contradict with each other? And that's not the end. You know central defenders can be given three different duties in uh, Football Manager. Defend, stopper or cover. The stopper duty is supposed to make the defenders push ahead of the defensive line. Whereas the cover duty is supposed to make the defenders drop deeper. Which means the option to tell your defenders either to push up or drop deeper was already present in the game uh, in the previous versions of Football Manager. To top it all off, there's an instruction here, hold position which you can turn uh, on or off. If you turn this instruction on, your defenders will be told to stick to their positions, which is just uh, another layer of confusion. Imagine you're a defender, right? You're about to go into a, a football match and your manager tells you, hey team, today we're going to play a low block tactic, but at the same time, I want the defensive line to push up as much as possible. Oh, but hey, feel free to drop deeper towards your own goal from time to time. And by the way, today the central defenders will be on stopper duties, so I want the defenders to push up towards the opposition rather than dropping deeper. But at the same time, I want you guys to hold your position and not deviate from your positions too much. You see, everything's just really confusing, and honestly, I have no idea how all these instructions work uh, in conjunction with one another. So I guess the least I can do is to, to test these instructions individually so that uh, I can find out uh, whether these instructions are working as intended. So what I'll do first is to show you some screenshots of average positions of players during a match in FM23. My hypothesis is that if you tell your players to step up more, the average positions of your defenders should appear higher towards the opposition. Uh, and if you tell your players to drop, uh, drop off more, the average positions should appear lower towards your own goal. Does that sound fair enough? In order to gather the uh, required data, I used the Community Shield match between Man City and Liverpool, uh, which takes place at the start of the preseason in England. I have six images in front of you uh, that represent the average positions of Liverpool players as I changed the defensive line instructions. The exact details on how I've gathered all these screenshots I'll uh, write down on the screen right now. So do feel free to pause the video and uh, have a read before you uh, unpause and continue watching. The three images at the top are the average positions of Liverpool players with the ball. And the three images at the bottom are the average positions without the ball. The two images on the left, are um, it's when no instruction was turned on. The two images in the middle, uh, it's when the instruction step up more was turned on and the two images on the right are when the instruction drop off more was turned on. So what do you guys reckon? Do you notice any difference between these six images? Honestly, I don't think I am. I mean, even if you just focus on the four defenders uh, in, in these images, can you really say that these guys here are stepping up more towards the opposition? And can you really say that these guys here are dropping down more towards uh, towards their own goal? My answer is no, but I'll leave it up to you guys to make up your own minds. Maybe the average positions aren't showing the effects of the defensive line instructions for some odd reason. 
So we'll have a look at some heat maps this time. I have six heat maps in front of you. Uh, so these are the heat maps for the two central defenders for Liverpool, uh, Virgil van Dijk and uh, Ibrahim Konate. These two images are when no instruction was turned on. These two images are when the instruction step up more was turned on. And these two are when the instruction drop off more was turned on. Again, I will quickly show you the full details of these heat maps on the screen right now. So uh, feel free to pause the video uh, if you want to have a read. Oh, by the way, uh, in order to produce these heat maps, I used the Football Manager heat map generator, which is a program that you can download from the FM Scout website. I've mentioned this before uh, in one of my previous videos, but the default heat maps that are provided by the uh, the Football Manager match reports in the game, uh, they're inaccurate because they're based on the uh, the ball touches made by the players rather than the actual area occupied by occupied by players on the pitch. I don't know why the developers made it that way. Don't ask me why. Uh, but anyway, uh, using the Football Manager heat map generator, I was able to produce the actual accurate heat maps for uh, Virgil van Dijk and uh, Konate. So what do you guys reckon? Do you think in these two heat maps, the two defenders are stepping up more as instructed? And do you think in these two heat maps, uh, the two defenders are dropping down more? Again, I don't think I'm seeing any difference between uh, all these heat maps in terms of how far these defenders are, uh, you know, located on the pitch. Okay, what I've done next is to re repeat the same experiments but using a controlled match environment uh, rather than the uh, community shield match. The community shield match is realistic, sure, but uh, there are there are lots of variables that are not being controlled. So sometimes, if you make minor changes to your tactics. Uh, the effects of those tactical changes can get lost in uh, the statistical noise generated by all those uncontrolled variables. So here I present to you the Test Cup match. Uh, it's a, a match environment that I always use for my Football Manager experiments. It's a completely artificial match uh, created uh, using the game editor. The match is played between two artificial teams, Team A and Team B. Uh, they're both, both, both of these teams are filled up with artificial players who all have identical attributes and hidden attributes. The match is played at a neutral venue uh, in order to eliminate any uh, home ground advantage. And also I've added a second manager in the game, uh, which means that uh, both teams, Team A and Team B, they're both under my control. Basically, it's a, it's a match environment where the two teams are completely equal in strength and uh, all the variables are being controlled as tightly as possible. So using the test cup match, I've gathered the average positions and heat maps of uh, Team A as I change the defensive line instructions. I have six images here showing you the average positions of Team A players. These two images are when, the, uh, when no instruction was turned on. These two are when the instruction uh, step up more was turned on, and these two is when the instruction drop off more was turned on. Now, are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? I think I am. I, Yeah, I don't think I'm noticing any difference between these six images. How about looking at some heat maps this time? So here I have uh, four heat maps here. Uh, they represent the heat maps of the two central defenders for Team A uh, as I change the, uh, the defensive line instructions. Again, it's the same conclusion for me. I, I don't notice any difference in uh, in these heat maps in terms of uh, the level of defensive line occupied by these uh, central defenders. Hey, maybe even the heat maps aren't telling us the full story. Maybe the effects of the new instructions are not being revealed either in the average positions or the heat maps. Although I really think that they should. So this time we'll have a look at some statistics. I've repeated the uh, Community Shield and the Test Cup matches 45 times each. So that's uh, 15 times with no instructions turned on, uh, acting as a control group, 15 times with Step Up More turned on, and 15 times with Drop Off More turned on. I've recorded the following list of statistics that, uh, that I think could be useful in revealing the effects of the Step Up More and the Drop Off More instructions. Uh, so these are pass accuracy of the opposition team, ball possession of the own team, running distance recorded by the central defenders, pass accuracy of the central defenders, the number of tackles made during the match by the central defenders, the number of clearances, uh, blocks, interceptions, fouls, the number of times ball possession was won by the central defenders, 
the number of times ball possession was lost by the central defenders, and finally, uh, the number of times pressing was attempted by the central defenders uh, during the match. So I have four tables here. The first table is the list of statistics that I gathered from the Test Cup matches. The second table is a list of uh, the p-values for uh, all the stats from the first table. The third table is the stats from the Community Shield matches. And the last table is the list of the p-values for the stats in the third table. P-values are basically used to indicate whether or not the difference between two or more sample groups are statistically significant. I'm not an expert statistician, but my understanding is that p-values lower than 0.05 is an indication that the difference between two sample groups are statistically significant and are not just a result of some uh, random statistical fluctuations. For example, uh, let's have a look at uh, this part here. Uh, during the Test Cup match, when no instruction was turned on, Team A recorded 50.6% ball possession. Uh, remember, I repeated uh, the exact same match 15 times per every sample group. So all these values that you see here in these tables, uh, they're an average of 15 matches, yeah? When the instruction drop off more was turned on, the average ball possession of Team A fell to 49.3%. And it's tempting to conclude at this point that, okay, when the team is instructed to drop deeper, they're deliberately giving away possession of the ball to the opposition team, so the drop-off more instruction must be working as intended. But not so fast. If you have a look at the corresponding p-value, it's 0.16, which is greater than the threshold value of 0.05, meaning that the, uh, the difference between these two values, 50.6 and 49.3, is likely to be just a, a result of random statistical fluctuations. Another example, have a look at the, uh, the number of times pressing was attempted by the central defenders during the Test Cup matches. When no instruction was turned on, the central defenders of Team A attempted on average 7.1 uh, presses per match. And uh, when the step up more instruction was turned on, that value went up to uh, 7.6. And again, it's tempting to think that, uh, hey, the defenders are pressing the opposition more, so the step up more instruction uh, is working as intended by the developers. But if you have a look at the p-value, it's 0.79, which is, uh, again, greater than uh, 0.05, uh, meaning that the difference between 7.1 and 7.6 is probably, uh, again, just a random fluctuation and not necessarily because, uh, because of the step up more instruction that was turned on. So out of all these stats that I've gathered, only one of them returned a p-value of uh, lower than 0.05, and that's this one here. Percentage ball possession of Liverpool uh, during the Community Shield matches. When no instruction was turned on for Liverpool, ball possession was 44%, and when step up more was turned on, ball possession went up to 46%. The p-value between these two sample uh, pools is 0.01, meaning that the 2% increment in ball possession here may not just be an accident. Does this mean that the step up more instruction really has the effect of uh, boosting ball possession of your team? Honestly, I still have my doubts because in the Test Cup matches, uh, which is the testing environment that's controlled a lot better than the Community Shield match, the corresponding uh, p-value is 0.85, which argues the opposite of what the p-value for the Community Shield match is trying to argue. The p-value from the Test Cup matches imply that there's no statistically significant difference in ball possession when step up more is turned on. The p-value from the Community Shield matches imply that there is. So, so which one out of the two do I give more credit? I think I'll go with the result from the Test Cup matches, because like I said, uh, that's the testing environment that's controlled a lot better than the Community Shield matches. And also, even if we give this uh, p-value the benefit of the doubt and uh, make the conclusion that the step up more instruction can raise ball possession of your team, is the increment of 2% really that relevant? How about all these other statistics that didn't show any statistically significant change? Lads, I, I have no choice but to repeat the same conclusion that I gave before, uh, which is that, uh, based on these statistics, the evidence that the step up more and the drop off more instructions have any effect on your team or on your players in FM23 is extremely limited, if not non-existent. 
Look, uh, what I'll do is I will upload this Excel table on my Dropbox. Uh, I have a Dropbox folder where I make all this uh, Excel tables publicly available. Uh, so you can feel free to go there, have a look at all this data yourselves. I've got a section here where I've done all my uh, calculations for the p-values. So if there's any statisticians out there watching this video, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, go to my Dropbox, uh, have a look, and uh, uh, you can check that I've got my maths right. Guys, I've shown you three different types of evidences today. Uh, average positions of players, heat maps of central defenders, and a range of statistics. And unfortunately, none of those evidences seem to suggest to me that the step up more or the drop off more instructions are doing anything in the game. Needless to say, it's a conclusion that I'm very hesitant and very sad to make. But hey, I have to go by what evidence tells me. You know, this channel is called Evidence Based Football Major for a reason. Maybe there's a flaw in my experiment methodology or, or in the way that I'm interpreting all the data that I've gathered. If you guys can spot anything, uh, you know, any errors I might have made, uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I will have a look into it. I'll be more than happy to be proven wrong about the conclusion that I gave today due to some uh, mistake that I made uh, in my experiments. Football Manager's my favorite game in the world and uh, honestly, nothing would make me happier to know that the game mechanics are working well as intended by the developers. But I'm just not seeing that at the moment. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Uh, look, regardless of the findings that I talked about today, uh, it still feels good to be back uh, doing my Football Manager research. There's plenty of evidence-based research that's coming up in the next uh, uh, coming months, so stay tuned yeah, and I'll see you all next time.